What's going on, Chief Architect users? I've got a situation here where we're importing something from 3D Warehouse, and that item from 3D Warehouse is coming in a little askew, and it's coming in with a funny little fill style, which I'll show you in a second. I'm just gonna throw in one of my own rugs from my catalog, and we're gonna show that when we place this over the top, that line from that rug is coming right through, and we don't want that. We don't want that as an effect. And if we go and try to change the draw order and push this up to something above the furniture layer, that line still, in fact, is coming through this piece of furniture. So first thing, let's go ahead and rotate this thing so that it's straight up and down. So I'm just going to get a top down view, make this a little bit easy. I could, of course, do something like draw some kind of an inference line here. If you wanted to get the absolute accuracy, you would get into the CAD menu do a CAD detail from view so that you could actually snap straight to this particular CAD block. So we'd explode this CAD block. Now these are just lines that we can snap to giving us a bunch of different snap points so that I can grab a line like the one I just drew and then grab another line and use our angle tools to pick up this angular dimension. And of course you got to switch to something like um, I have a CAD dimension default that will dimension to CAD. So there we go. 27.38 degrees is how much I want to rotate this symbol. So I can come back in here, open this up. 27.38. Let's see if I actually guessed the right direction. We want to rotate this. Uh, let's see. I believe in the negative direction in Z. Nope, I got it wrong. Here we go. Positive direction. There we go. So now that's perfectly aligned and then let's get into that 2d symbol let's go ahead and choose to generate the block that's going to generate this new block and once i've got that i want to open this up so from the edit menu get into edit cad block and let's see why this isn't producing any kind of fill style that's because none of these lines they're all broken lines because this particular symbol has a lot going on with it. It's got a lot of vertices to it, so it's not completing the segments. So what I wanna do is I wanna highlight all of this and use our extend objects tool in our edit toolbar and draw some lines through here a few times using that tool over and over again, just to extend these lines as much as possible so I can get a large segment like this, okay? From there, I wanna pick kind of where my center point's at and just draw in a line to just cut through here. And we can use the trim tool to trim the object past that line, right? That's just leaving us with this line on the one side. The next thing I kind of wanna do is I'm gonna draw in kind of an inference line here for the back of this sofa cushion and the front of this sofa cushion. And then I'll pick up that one line again and I'm gonna hold control and draw a marquee over the top of this. What that did is invert the selection within the marquee. So I can just hit delete and it's just leaving me that one large segment that I could copy paste and reflect about this center line and then use the extend tool to extend it to the left hand side. So I'm gonna extend to this left hand side if I can. It seems like we've got something here that's not quite matching up. There we go. I just needed to unsnap it and snap it back in. And the last thing I wanna do here is just hit close polyline, all right? The next piece of this is I'm just gonna make a shape out of our polyline tool. I'll just do half of this sofa and then that way I can hold the F key to kind of fill it this corner, fill it this corner. And so I'm just making that cushion, extending this forward and then copy paste, reflect about and union the two. And I don't wanna retain the original objects. All right, the last piece of this puzzle is I'm going to subtract that inner cushion from the outer segment. And I do want to retain the original objects, but then I need to find the piece that has the line cutting across here and go ahead and delete it. What does this leave us with? Well, once we get rid of our little inference lines, that's a perfect looking sofa. The last bit is that we've got a closed piece here. So we can designate different fills here. So I'm gonna go a solid fill and maybe I'll just go a light gray color and then I'll go solid fill and maybe I'll do all white color for the cushion, all right? 
Now I can close this window, make sure to save the CAD block and all instances of that CAD block. And when we get back into this, we can say we can use the CAD block fill style, which is straight from the CAD block or overwrite that, get into the fill style panel set to solid. And this will give us a solid fill of whatever color we like. So this is now finally finished. We've got a solid fill color on this. Now, kind of a bonus to this video, of course, that got you through that portion of it. But I would say on the whole, when I want to um, import something from 3D Warehouse like this, oftentimes those 3D Warehouse symbols are going to come in with a really large surface count. In the 3D menu, we can always check this out. 26,000, that's not super large. We could, of course, deal with that. But something that um, you might try out is... Blender is a free software here. And so I imported this symbol into Blender first with a SketchUp add-on, making it so that it can open SketchUp files. And I just added a modifier and that modifier was the decimate modifier. I'll go back a few steps just to show you this. So here is our 26,000 poly count sofa with that decimate modifier. I just get to kick this ratio down and you can start to see that this sofa starts to get a little more simplified. If we really want to see what it's doing, let me show you what it looks like in terms of a wireframe. And once we decimate, watch what it's doing. It's just getting rid of that surface count, right? And so something to understand, and it takes a little bit of practice, is that we can get this to look very realistic still within Chief using Chief's built-in smoothing algorithms. Now you're going to lose some things like the piping, but maybe that doesn't matter to you. Maybe you would like a nice light scene. So you can see here, I've decimated this down to 10,000 poly and it still looks pretty good. So there's a little food for thought. We would just export this as an OBJ file. So file export, and then let me just go wavefront OBJ. I'll pick this up. I want to make sure that the up axis is Z. The scale, um, Blender automatically goes in meters, so it's going to be a different scale than you want. Um, so you can just leave that scale one to one, export this wave front object. Let me get back to Chief Architect and right in the 3D panel menu over here in the replace geometry section, we can just click on that, find our symbol. There's that West Elm sofa chair OBJ. Notice that it's shrunken quite a bit we need to change our drawing unit to meters that'll resize it back up we can of course put that 27.38 degrees so we're gonna have to do this little piece again and actually now it's straightened up we can do 90 there we go we want the front of this oriented so that it's in the negative y direction and we should have retained our 2d symbol during this because we only do this ask as needed, or maybe I should have done never beforehand. Let's just see if it retains. It does in fact retain. Let's take a look at what this looks like in 3D with a, maybe we'll put a light overhead and get that camera rendering going. And there we go. And the last thing I like to do is I like to have a nice upholstery kind of texture to work with as a base starter. So I've made a couple of these and then just paint this out and we're starting to look pretty good, All right? And then rendering mode, I'm just gonna kick this back up to quality and sharpening up a little bit so we can really see this thing shine. And then the last thing is maybe I'm changing the UV scale of this check texture down to something like 15. We're cutting that in half and yeah, that doesn't look too bad. That's a night, nice lightweight sofa chair, sofa chair from West Elm. Very cool. Leak a leave a like. This is kind of uh, the stuff that I put into my VIP membership area of YouTube. So, um, you know, at, at times I'll drop in these little free tidbits and then I might move this to the membership area. So leave a like, leave some comments and yeah, enjoy.